This session is about a blood glucose regulation. The glucose in our body is to be maintained within a normal range. That is between 70 to 110 mg per deciliter. Why we need a carbohydrate metabolism? For two things. One, to maintain the blood glucose value. And second, one, to provide energy. That is ATP. So because organs they solely depend on glucose for its metabolism. Glucose is the only fuel for these organs. Brain, RBC and skeletal muscles. So primary energy fuel for these organs are glucose. So when the glucose molecule is metabolized in these cells they produce ATP for their energy. In this class we will look into the blood glucose regulation that means we are not going to see about the energy fuel metabolism but how it is regulated in the blood circulation how the levels are maintained. I have said the blood glucose value is balanced between a narrow range 70 to 110 milligram per deciliter this should be in an equilibrium in a balance if there is any fall or rise between this range it has to be corrected by our system so blood glucose to be maintained within this normal range so how the blood glucose is maintained by two things one, the formation and utilization, rate of glucose entry into the blood circulation and how the glucose is, rate of glucose is utilized. So, there should be a balance between formation of glucose and utilization of glucose so that the range is maintained between 70 to 110. Formation is by dietary sources. The first dietary sources because when we are eating, we are taking dietary rich carbohydrates like rice, potatoes, etc. These are converted into simple monosaccharides by the mechanism called digestion and absorption. So, the carbohydrates are in the form of starch, lactose, fructose, sucrose, maltose, etc. So, all these compounds are digested in our body to a simple monosaccharides like glucose, galactose and fructose. They are absorbed in the intestinal cells and go to the circulation. So, they are absorbed and enters the circulation. Second thing by gluconeogenesis. Gluconeogenesis means we are synthesizing new glucose during fasting and exercise. Glycogenolysis also happening during overnight fast. So, all this provides glucose to the circulation. Utilization of the glucose is done by glycolysis, TCA cycle, glycogenesis and lipogenesis. So, whenever we are eating, the excess glucose is taken up by the cells through insulin hormone. So, it goes for ATP production. Once the ATP is produced, excess glucose go and store as glycogen. Where it is stored in liver and muscles. So, other than that, the excess glucose may go and store as triacylglycerol in the adipose tissues. So, these are the three things happen during utilization. So, these formation and utilization should be in a balance to maintain the blood glucose value. This graph shows various stages during glucose utilization. So, if you take a meal for 3 to 4 hours, so the dietary glucose intake as well as utilization for 3 to 4 hours, it is called as absorptive stage. After 4 hours, when the blood glucose level falls, the glycogen from the liver takes its action. So, it produces the glucose and maintains the blood glucose level. So, the liver glycogen comes into play. This is called as post-absorptive stage. This stage remains for up to 60 to 18 hours. 
so this glycogen level will be there for 16 to 18 hours if you don't take meal in between at 24 hours at 24 hours the liver glycogen store is completely depleted so the glycogen stores are fully depleted at 24 hours in within 24 hours so when the glycogen store is depleted it is taken up by this function is taken up by the gluconeogenesis so following post absorptive stage the stage is called starvation so more than 2 days it is called as starvation more than 7 days it is called as prolonged fasting or prolonged starvation so in this slide we'll see how the glucose levels are maintained in the blood i have said the normal range is 70 to 110 mg per deciliter if there is rise in blood glucose level your pancreas release the insulin insulin stimulates the glucose entry into the cell so glucose uptake by the cell is stimulated by insulin this glucose are utilized for energy purpose when there is excess glucose it is converted to glycogen and stored in the liver this helps in falling the range to normal okay so the no normal range is so this makes the level to be normal once again what happens when it is below 70 mg per deciliter same thing happens your pancreas releases another hormone glucagon this glucagon it converts glycogen to glucose that means it stimulates glycogenolysis so that this glucose comes out of the liver into the circulation to maintain the blood glucose level to 70 to 110 so now it reverts back to normal this is what happening when there is derangement in the blood glucose values